uh, playing uh, EastEnders matriarch Carol Jackson. Recently, viewers have witnessed her ongoing battle with breast cancer, but are happier days finally ahead? David! Look, Simon. No. What's your screen? You'll catch your death. I don't want to lose you. Well, you won't, will you? Go look after David. He's a grown man. I know he is. Will you marry me? Can you? A perfectly nice night, and you have to go and spoil it. Marry me. Of course, I'll marry you. <laughs> <laughs> It's interesting, actually, we were saying, just uh, as we were watching that, that it's a great partnership. Yeah. Um, you work very well together. You do. He makes you work very well, actually. It's like, it's like, um, it's like a tennis match with Michael. Mm. He, he, he'll come in and he... <coughs> sorry. <coughs> sorry, I've got cold. It's all right. And he bats something. You think it's going to go that way, and he bats something over, and you go, oh, it's... So it's always a really, really joyous thing to, to, to be part of. And it's him. one of those storylines that is so rare, actually, and that you only get in soap because it's been going for it's so history. long. Yeah. I mean, sometimes people fill you in on what's been happening in their life before the show yeah. started, but we've actually witnessed this. We've watched it happen. We've watched our struggle, haven't yeah. we? So, yeah. And that's lovely. So for the script writers, just by us being there together, without doing anything, the history is just all sort of telling the story. But well, there have been big pauses, haven't <clears> there? There have been gaps between those relationships. Well, a longer for Michael, I think. Yeah. He, he left in 96 he came back briefly for Pam's and then you know I, I'd had a 10-year gap obviously mm. and it was so lovely when I found out that he was going to come back next year to sort of play play this story mm. so, it's, mm. so what's gonna happen I mean it's been a bumpy bumpy road for the two yeah. of them and it seems like they've they've got it back on track they've got the wedding just around the corner but there's Nikki, there's all that business. Well, she, I don't know anything about that. No. Actually. Interesting. It's funny, isn't it? Because I don't, I, at the moment, I think I totally, well, I know, I totally trust and believe him. Yes. Because last week, I think you saw her, she had neutropenia, which, so she ended up in hospital. And there's a lovely scene between them. And I think that was a really sort of solidifying their relationship about trust and, and, and believing him. So as far as Carol's concerned, you know, if anything happens to her, she wants somebody also to look after her family. So. Mm. And I think she thinks he's changed. I think he's changed. So um, I think it's at the moment it's a really love. And the wedding, you know, she's very excited about the wedding. You know, she doesn't know what her future holds for her, mm. but she knows that. And also, I think having the cancer story for her, she's living in the now. Mm. This is what she's doing today. She's not looking to the future so much no, in a way of where she's going to go. What's going to happen? Future's too scary. And yeah. Well, the cancer story uh, has been very highly regarded, and because you have all taken it very seriously yeah and you've worked very hard on it yeah in what way because what sort of research did you do you met i think you did you meet about five women <coughs> i met five stages? or different six women the, the thing is about having breast cancer is everybody has a story to tell you about breast cancer and at first it was really overwhelming because i wanted to get the story right for so many people because i sat and talked with so many women about five or six women and I felt a little bit overwhelmed by that because I can't get their story right. And the thing about everybody's journey with breast cancer, it's all different. It's, mm. all, it's all a different journey and each treatment is a different reaction to it. Or, but I wanted, to, I wanted to show the sort of the vulnerability and the ugliness of it. You know, and actually if you're going to look, if you're ill, you're going to look ill. And, um, and I think the script writers have done that. I think the researchers have done their job, the makeup department, the costume. It's been a wonderful collaboration of everybody trying to make this story the best it can be for, for people that are going through it, you know, sort of, you know, serving it for, for them. And I, I think we have... It's not wood, but uh, I should touch that anyway. I, I know. Yeah, I, I, I mean, it has been... It's been wonderfully acted by, by yourself. Thank um, you. Did, did, has it been hard to separate yourself from it? Because I always think when you immerse yourself so entirely in a role like this and with this storyline, does it take an emotional toll I did on at, you? at first, at Christmas, when I had to find out the diagnosis and play all that stuff, I found it really difficult. I did find it hard to detach. In fact, I started a, a running group. I joined a running group mm. because lovely Rita gave me a little thing to wear because she said, she, she looked at me and she said, you look like you're um, Rita in the show. Yeah. It's Emma's. What's her name? It's Simon. Yes, sorry. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah, so she said to me, it looks like you're, you're becoming this quite low, depressed person. And I thought, well, that's right. I'm not. I'm playing somebody who's got it. But I do need to detach. And I started running for six weeks. I don't like running. Yeah. But I needed to know that I actually 
I'm healthy. Yeah. Um, and that's been quite good. So I've sort of slightly detached. And although she's got cancer, Carol, she's also living her life now. You know, that's part of it. And I think that's all, it's also part of people's journey. To go, the chemo is fighting the cancer, and I've got a life to live, and I'm mm. fighting it, and I've got to look after my kids. You know, it's sort of part of the whole bigger picture. So I did, yeah, but I did, sorry, go back to your question, I did have to detach a little yeah. from that. We've, uh, we've got a, a powerful clip from uh, tonight's show. Mm. Grown boy, not. This is a song, isn't it? Yeah. Summer of 76, if I remember rightly. Me and you, in my mum's front room. Yeah, we bunked off school. Probably. Yeah, come here. <laughs> <laughs> mm. Mm. Well, you're so embarrassing. It's called being in love, darling. <laughs> Uh, it's lovely. And a uh, big response in the Hub this morning. Uh, what have you got, Jeff? Yes, lots of comments coming in for you, Lindsay. An amazing uh, job that you're doing as Carol and his send As Jennifer said, the storyline is very close to home and uh, has had me in tears. Lindsay is very brave for playing such a role, but brings awareness to many, many women. Uh, Samantha, his standards wouldn't be the same without Carol, and Carol's cancer has reminded me of my fabulous mum who beat the disease. What a wonderful thing. Lisa Percival, fantastic storyline and really well played by Lindsay. It's good to see how people deal with this subject matter and continue to run and uphold a large family like Carol is. Susie says Lindsay has always played an important role in EastEnders. She has put her heart and soul into this storyline, as always. And Teresa, lastly, says very well played with great sensitivity. Well done, Lindsay. That's going to be nice to hear. Yeah, it's lovely to hear, yeah. And so, um, so what, what about them now, then? How, how, how much can you tell us? Is there a little bit of happiness? Yes. <laughs> it's EastEnders. <laughs> well, yes, she looks good. She's, she's, uh, I've got a lovely wedding dress. I can say that because I'm getting married. Yeah, we know yeah, that, don't yeah, we? Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, yeah, we, We're filming so far, so far away. Um, I've got a, a different wig. <laughs> it, it was weird actually because I've got this different dress that's not like Carol, a different hairstyle. Because I thought for Carol, it's like if, you, if you've got a chance to wear a wig. Mm. Where's something that maybe you, it's not you? So I've got a different wig, and actually for a while I didn't know who I was as a character because yeah. like, so I don't I don't know what voice I'm using. I'm I felt like Miss Havisham actually, so I don't know. <laughs> maybe I've gone into a strange character. Well, we're gonna um, have to. It's the 26th of May, I think that we 27th, can. 27th, I think. 27th, it's that was one. it? Okay, yeah. that we can actually see the I wedding. Think, so we've got yeah. a little while somewhere around about that time. Yes. I'm sure we'll be talking about yeah. it with Sharon Marshall on Soapbox before, so we'll let you know. And congratulations on the Soap Award nomination. Yeah, thank as you. Well. Yeah, that's exciting. It's lovely. I'm, I'm, you know, it's, it's a, it's. Um, Are you going on the night? Nice to be recognised. Will you be there? Hopefully. Will I see you on the yes. night? Yes. Oh, do come. Please. Yes. Please, I'm inviting you. Please come. Are you? Are you doing it? Of course I am. Yeah. yeah you absolutely. do everything, Philip, don't you? Well. <laughs> you do lots of things. <laughs> A few things. <laughs> What I don't do, Holly does. So. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> well, you do it so well. Well, yeah, thank, you. Uh, thank you. Um, thank you. <laughs> thank you very much. Thank you. Thank, thank you. It's lovely to see you. Uh, right, from uh, an EastEnder to an Essex boy now. Uh, 